Attention chiropractors, slayers of subluxation, unleashers of the imprisoned impulse. I am Dr. Anthony Pellegrino from ChiroEdge, and welcome to this week's episode of the Chiropractic Research Breakdown, where each week we break down the most relevant chiropractic science and philosophy to empower you with the ammo and certainty necessary to change your community from the inside out. All right, guys, I am honored to be joined today by Dr. Curtis Fedorchuk, uh, who's been in practice for 17 years, we said, down in Georgia. Uh, he's at his current location there at, for six years. They're building out a brand new, beautiful facility. So I'm super pumped that he took time away from that to uh, take a spend it with us this evening. Uh, he's also the owner of Better Health by Design as the office, is founder and co-owner of Health and Wellness Score. He's also had publications over the last couple of years that uh, he's a co-author on probably, I would say, one of the most referenced studies if you've ever been in chiropractic college, which is intra-examiner and inter-examiner reproducibility of paraspinal thermography. He's looked at isometric contraction of interior cervical muscles and cervical lordosis. We've looked at spondies. We've looked at telomeres. We've looked okay. at glycosylated hemoglobin. Now we are talking about brain circulation. Correct. Did I get everything there? Anything else you want to add? That's it so far. Lots of things cooking though. Lots of things cooking. I love it. We're going to talk about it. So in brain circulation, this was really cool. It was throw, rolling through. Actually, it wasn't rolling through Poe You shot me this article. It was recently published called Increase in Cerebral Blood Flow yes. Indicated by Increased Cerebral Arterial Area and Pixel Intensity on Brain Magnetic Resonance Angiogram Following Correct. Correction of Cervical Lordosis. I haven't seen anything like this in chiropractic before. Tell me, what the heck made you guys decide to do this? The um, it all. Well, I have to give props to obviously the lead author and his wife, Dr. Evan Katz, out of Boulder, Colorado. Now, what happened is, again, we all kind of my 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 tight circle of friends, if you will, we're all big into research, so everyone has like the different things that they're into. So, Dr. Katz was starting to tell us about because he he's very big into diagnostics. He has a DMX. He looks for um, you know his motion X-ray to look for instabilities. And he finds things that other people don't. So, just uh, he's he was ordering these tests on people just to ensure that they didn't have any contraindications for care, like blood flow to the brain and whatnot. And uh, you start to, you know, notice a trend to where you know, it's on the MRI, on the MRAs where a cervical curve is induced, that there's more blood flow. So you're starting to think, hey, maybe I have something here. So long story short, he starts talking to us about it. And then I go to a conference last October. It was actually, I was the only chiropractor there. There was 32 countries. Like there's representation for 32 different countries. There was a medical imaging conference in Washington, D.C. And they're talking about pixelation. Everything was pixelation. Now, it's kind of funny because I was the only guy there with x-ray. So I was like the antiquated horse and buggy guy. And everyone else was like PhDs, university backing. And they had all these studies. Amazing. They could actually pix like show the spinal tracts in the spinal cord. They could show it colored. And I was just like loving all this stuff. So I said to this one guy who was showing us brain pixelation, he says the newest thing He's, he's talking about perfusion and how the blood going into the brain is so important. And I, and if you're familiar, have you ever heard of type three diabetes? We've spoken about it briefly, yeah. but I'm not that familiar. And I'm sure many type listeners diabetes is Alzheimer's what they're calling it. So I started doing research on all this stuff in terms of like when I was looking up diabetes research and then basically it's the, the brain, the, the blood can't get to the brain anymore. So you don't have oxygen you know, blood supply to the brain. You start dying off you lose neurons. And then you, you know, that's, that's one of the theories and you can look, they actually, one of the, it actually, we, we cited this study. It shows one of the biggest indicators of the precursors to Alzheimer's is a lack of blood flow to the brain. So I show at this imaging conference, I already had some of Dr. Katz's images and I literally just flipped it to these guys kind of on the side. And I'm like, does this interest you? And this, everyone said this, how did you do this? I'm like, shh, tell you later. Like, like guys from Johns Hopkins, like all over the place, again, all over the, like all over the world, 32 countries. People are like asking me, like, how do you do this? How did you do this? How did you do this? I'm like, oh, well, you know, we're going to publish it and tell you then. So anyways, uh, so then it gets published in Brain Circulation. What If you read it, it shows that there is an increase in at least 25% up to 200% increase in, in pixelation. Again, that's how they're measuring whether there's actually volume changes. So, I mean, just that in itself, we are getting so much traffic from that. People want to know. It's just a small study that's going to open up a whole can of worms for the profession. I mean, again, we're looking at, and it's premature, but the implications we're thinking, again, like Alzheimer's, like brain function, all kinds of stuff. So there's obviously a lot of more studies have to be done on that, but that takes money. Like something like that costs thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, never mind your time. 
So Dr. Katz and I mean, just for him, like, Hey, you guys want to be on the paper? We're just honored that he did that. And again, so Dr. Doug Lightstone, he just like great writer. So he did this did an awesome job on the paper submitting it to that journal. I will tell you, we went through review for six months. Like if you look at the review board for that paper, it's all like Harvard, UCLA, Berkeley, like all these like high end people that like, they're not letting like garbage in. Right. So anyways, awesome paper. They did an amazing job. I'm just proud to be a part of it. But again, the implications are, again, is like cognitive function. So for the profession, what does it mean? Is that regardless of your technique, now I'm a CVP guy, so are all my friends, right? And our, we are big into, we're very segmental and very, but also at least the global changes into curve either restoration or cur curve implementation, if you want to call it that, because some of the straight spine, you don't want that either. So if, and regardless of someone's technique, if they are able to actually put a curve in, they, they should achieve similar results. I mean, what we show is like more curve, more blood. Like that was it. And so again, it doesn't have to be a certain technique. That's what it showed. So again, if you and your practice are like, hey, I'm getting pre and post changes, I'm getting awesome curves, awesome. You should have the same results. So again, we're going to more further investigation. We get all that stuff costs money. So now we're looking for like university funding and stuff like that because the people and I'm in contact and kind of like I said, I mean, I'm going back this year. They actually asked me to be a, a keynote speaker this year, that conference I was telling you about, this medical imaging conference. Wow. It was funny because I actually said to them, I'm like, hey, just so you know, I'm the only chiropractor here, so lock the door, you know, because no one's leaving. And they, they, they all chuckled. It was just, like, pretty funny. So, um, but anyways, yeah, so that is is just a huge deal for the profession, actually measuring something like that and showing changes. It, it just, it can only, it'll only just grow from there. I love that. And actually what you just brought up is a huge point that I wanted to ask you about was what you're specifically referencing. And, and I love the way that you did it is I don't think, I don't remember like using the word specifically subluxation, but we're specifically talking about improvements of in cervical lordosis. Yeah. So that really is good in terms of separation because it's like, it doesn't matter the technique. If no. you improve cervical curve, this is going to be the change. Correct. And it kind of throws out a lot of the people who are like, oh, subluxation doesn't exist, chiropractic is just musculoskeletal. And it's like, well, listen, if you're not improving curves, that's not my fault. Yeah. I mean, if that was the case, like, again, I don't, again, my last few studies, and they're case studies, but again, don't think I don't have, like, case series coming. We published a case on telomeres, telomeres, whatever you want to call it. We have a diabetes series, prospective stuff. We have stuff that showing, the, I mean, the neck pain, back pain thing, I don't know, yawn, right? 100%. Move along. We have, um, again, changes in A1C and blood sugar immediately following care with like real time um, Dexcom meters that show your blood sugar every five minutes. I'm mean, going to have a dozen cases of this now. It's about to be published, so I don't want to say too much. Dr. Doug always gets on to me when I try to like say too much. It's like, shh, don't say anything yet. I mean, again, most of my studies have to do with physiology and not like neck and back pain. I mean, we do have on my spondy paper, you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like bone on nerve, like a, like a 13 millimeter slippage of a spondy. How is that good for anybody? We have the latest. We have like people with foot drop. I mean, no pain, but they can't, they, if you can't walk, I mean, that's like physiology. Like you, you can't, you don't have leg function. So we have changes in that. We have over a hundred spondy changes, 25 failures, as I say. So out of 125 cases plus, we have a hundred successes. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not, and people aren't coming in here like, Hey, fix my back. Pain. I mean, they are, but it's like, Hey, I can't walk. Like, what do you do about it? So, and it's, that's drawn us attention from six different countries have inquired about care at our office. Yeah. Like six. Yeah. It's crazy. So we have there are recent patients. He's coming from, um, actually coming from Washington. Uh, we have another one coming from New York and we try to set them up with other offices that do the same as us. Cause you know, we don't have spirit fingers and magic hands. I mean, if you do the right thing, you should be able to get the same results. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, man, that's all about physiology. That's what I've, I've, I've been into it, you know, since day one. That's what I've wanted to prove. I love that. And the reproducibility is something that I think is, is just oh, yeah. huge. I mean, I do a good job, attention to detail, but you do the same thing. You'll get the same results, right? Love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. Just kind of taking out some stuff like clinical implication from the discussion that I loved. We already hit on Alzheimer's and uh, yeah. dementia. Yeah. Huge chronic cerebral artery perfusion. Yeah. What I like is uh, it, is kids. Like, what's the implication for kids? Well, cerebral blood flow is related to recovery, and this is not chiropractic research, yeah. right? This yeah. is just general research, recovery from sports-related concussions. Oh, huge. Yeah. They even say, like, head injuries is a precursor to MS. So, again, to see it this way, if you have a lack of blood flow over a series of years, you have parts of the brain. Again, you know, there's research on that. I mean, if you look, if you type into Google, like, Alzheimer's brain images – now you have to do functional MRI studies, right? 
anyways, but yeah, man, it's just like, it's so exciting. Again, the fact that Dr. Katz was talking about it with us and allowed us to be on the paper is a huge, huge deal. So he has a, a company called Professionally Integrated. And we kind of also talk about that. It, it, it helps chiropractors huge. We've been members of that for a couple of years now, just in terms of documentation. He, what he has is tons of research showing why it's so important to do what we do. You know, it's, it's, it's this huge, huge thing. So got to give him mad props for that. In addition to just having the guts and the wherewithal to actually publish this, this study. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, a big, big thank you to you, the CBP oh. crew and everything you guys do for the profession. You're doing a good job. Mad props to you. I know a lot of people say you're doing a lot of good stuff. Thanks. And, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, man. Listen, just get it out there. If you get it out to like five people, again, for me too, like publishing stuff, like why do they do it? Someone's like, someone's like, oh, you just won one more case study. I'm like, right. I mean, I, I need it. I need a 40th case study to like have the wall. I go, it's not. It's, it's so people out there in the field who wouldn't know better can actually reference this stuff. How many diabetes studies are there out there? None. How many telomere studies are out there? None. Now there is. You know what I mean? Now somebody needs to go out and do like a thousand of them. I'm just trying to be the catalyst to someone else to like one up me a hundredfold. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I would love for you to be one up. We we would all yeah. benefit if you got one up. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, again, here it is. Now somebody make it that much better. That's how stuff starts. So anything we need to know about what's coming from you? Oh, huge. This is the biggest thing. So real fast. You ever been to a dentist? I have. Okay. Uh, did they ever tell you have cavities? No, actually, I'm clear. Dude, oh. I'm clear. Me too. No yeah. cavities ever. So I go to the dentist. Guy tells me I have a new dentist. He tells me I have five cavities. I was like, five? Dang, six months ago, none. So I went to another dentist, and I've told this story a few times, and the other dentist says, you have no cavities. I'm like, okay. So I go, oh, by the way, the guy down the street told me I had five. And even if they would have said, say they would have said five and five, I would have said, which ones? Right? But here's the thing. Do I still go to the dentist? Right? What do, when I told my friends this story, what did my friends say? Hey, no, Dennis, what do they say about the guy said at five cavities? He's just trying to bill your insurance. Right. But they don't say the reason you didn't have cavities is because cavities don't exist. Right. <laughs> right. You know, where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hey, you're down the road says I have like subluxations. You flip a coin, depending on where he goes, the guy down the road is going to say what? There's no such thing as subluxations. Like really? Wow. So what exactly are you doing in your office? So what we did is a couple of years ago, uh, my entire practice database this is like this is like this is my hugest project that I can tell you has cost me a lot, right? Money, stress, the whole nine. There's bigger stress in life, but again, you don't want to you don't want to do things that cause you stress. You want to put this stuff out so it actually is good for the profession. But it is regardless. Are you familiar with epidemiology? Yeah. Okay, it's the cornerstone of public health. I mean, it's like. So do you know there's not one study in chiropractic talking about the epidemiology of subluxation? I do. I know that because all the metapractors post that on all of my videos. All right. Well, guess what we have in hand? An epidemiology study on like 3,000 people. All right. So that's, I'm, I'm getting a little hot. This is, it's pretty awesome. I know. It's wild. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's right. wild, man. That's awesome. So, but here, well, so what is it? How reliable is it? I have every x-ray, every line measurement between every segment down to the millimeter, down to the degree all in an Excel spreadsheet and uh, the statistics done by Emory University telling the prevalence at the level, like age, height, sex, weight, I have asymptomatic people, right? So that is all going to be published. It is absolutely amazing. Of course, all the stuff, it wouldn't be possible with the, of course, we use a program called Posture. Posture is like valid down to like and reliable down to like a millimeter, right? Yeah. So we have that. We have everything in order. So when we put this out, man, I know there's going to be haters, right? But again, we've been working hard at this for like, again, two years. It's been a huge, huge deal. And so when that goes out, that's going to be huge for the professional. Just show the prevalence again at every level. It's amazing to see it, man. I'm going to be honest with you. When it finally comes out, I'll just- I'm so it. excited. I'm going to spend like a month on this podcast talking about it. Like I'm just not, it's just going to be a live stream of me sleeping in the middle of the night talking about it. But it gets better because every, like I have, we also have like the translation of vertebrae. So mm -hmm. we able to measure the prevalence of spondies cervical, lumbar. Again, when you have, it's not sample size isn't a problem. 3000 subjects, not good enough for anyone. Right. That's great. Yeah. It's huge. So, and again, what will that be the catalyst for a study with 30,000? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. study with, cause again, when people start using x-ray analysis software, the documents, all this stuff, then it's just, we're going to be able to do it in huge quantities. So again, that is probably, I'm just so excited to get that out. For, and for the profession, I mean, 
it was, I, I'm telling you, man, it's people don't realize, and I'm not expecting people to understand like how much work goes into that stuff, but you have better things to do with your day than sit there and try to scrape all the data a week at a time over 10 years. Cause it's a 10 year period, right? 2007 to 2017, all my data. I just like to mine all the data and I had to hire students, people, my staff to go through every single file we have and put in the chief complaint they had at the time to put in an Excel spreadsheet. It takes hours and hours. And then to make sure your EMG stuff lines up with the, it's just a big deal. So anyways, it's finally, I'm just so excited that what can come of it and the analysis we can do for it. And again, finally, we'll be able to say, hey, the prevalence is X. And when you compare it to one of the things they're concerned about is how many people are walking around there asymptomatic that don't know about it. And we have, actually, it's kind of funny. It's we have 700 subjects out of 3,000 that came to my office asymptomatic, like just coming in to get checked. Do you know what I mean? Which is cool. Yeah. You know I mean, that's probably spouses or kids or whatever. And I can't wait to get that out because that in of itself is a separate study. And then what you do that the long range goal, by the way, is this. It's to make a health policy changes. So now you can go to Capitol Hill instead of you just with your torches and say, you know, burn the whoever. You say, hey, here's the data. X number of people are subluxated at X number of level and their quality of life is affected X way. They had XYZ condition and da, 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 da. And then you actually people can listen to you. And again, it's just a stepping stone. I mean, it's a big deal to me, but I'm sure someone who has more grandiose plans are like 3,000 is nothing. All right, we'll bring up the 30,000. You know, I'm totally, I'm totally up for that. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the meantime, that's what we have. Yeah, man. I love that. I love that. Well, I know that you're taking time away from your family. So I wanted to wrap up shortly here. Cool. Some of the people who uh, listen to this podcast are just here, just, just grabbing info and just grabbing yeah. certainty for their practice. Yeah. It just to impact their community. Some are doing real well. And what they ask me is like, how can I get involved with research on another level? How can I give back to the profession? And exactly. probably not going out and doing MRAs right now is probably not no. going to be their number no. one thing. Don't want to do that. But I know, I know you got something for them. So tell us about oh, it. Oh, huge. Okay. So what we do is everyone, all you have to do is your job. Like as I, you, all you have to do is do your job. What is that is to take care of people. So Dr. Doug Leister and I, we started something called health and wellness score. And what that is, is it's your ability, and regardless of the software you use, it is a database that collects quality of life assessments. Plus we just added literally today, we added objective data, meaning uh, pulse oximeters, HR, not HRV, blood glucose, grip strength, dynamometer with an, uh, muscle strength with actually using a dyno. We have a uh, spirometry, we have heart rate, blood pressure, all these things that are objective measures, grip strength, all these things can be just thrown in a uh, secure database. And then what we can do, so as you're taking care of your patients, we have SF36 scores, which is the most widely used health assessment form in the world, which is why we use it. We have neck disability index, we have lip lash, low back, we have all these quality life assessments, and we have all these clients that are putting their data into this. And what it allows us to do, pull that data out, put it on Excel spreadsheets, and measure the quality of life changes of people over time. So we can, our goal is to publish the largest study in the history of, not chiropractic, the history of healthcare. Like we already have enough data for the largest in chiropractic. That's fine. But we want like we want 30,000 people under care for like three to five years showing increased quality of life. And again, at the very least, that so practitioners, again, all they have to do is their job day to day. And by just contributing to that website, they will have their own data. Like the data is theirs. Like we don't own it or anything like that. It's theirs to use. We have to have permission to use it. We have statisticians, we have programmers, like we've, we've met so many people along the way, made so many good friends, if you will, from the research we've done, that they will look at that data and tell us what it means. It'll just be amazing. So we've been at it almost, it'll be three years in October. So, I mean, we're just excited. We're going to do like a three, five, 10, 15 year study showing. So what people have to do is just go to healthandwellnessscore.com and that is where they can sign up for it. And basically, again, it all it does is just, you're paying us to, you know, to hold your data, right? The, um, again, another plug, as I said in the beginning, professionally integrated for people to learn how to document stuff and for research, Dr. Katz's site, health and wellness score. That's the other thing. That's what Dr. Doug and I are doing. But we just want to see people to keep track of their results and they don't have to do anything else. Because I'll be honest with you, research is very hard. I mean, you got to apply. We have separate, we have a bunch of different IRBs that we apply to. We use the uh, foundation for vertebral subluxation. They've been great. They've supported us in terms of their pay. For example, they're paying for the statistics for our last study, which helps out. I mean, it's not like, you know, the lion's share of the, of the cost, but hey, anything helps. Like we're, we're open to anything, you know, that'll help us. So we've gotten other support. We're just thankful for that. But those are the, like the entities that are really doing hardcore work for us. So uh, for the profession. So I can't wait again for the epidemiology study. 
I can't, I can't wait to see where the brain circulation paper goes. I've been invited to the World Conference of Diabetes in like Dubai. And that's pretty cool, right? I mean, I was just like so excited to go there, but um, got so much, so many irons in the fire right now. I got to keep my nose to the grindstone and, and be good at practice. And every once in a while, you get to adjust people too. I adjust all day. I all mean, day. I, so I'm like nonstop. Yes. And of course, we're moving into a new facility that we built from the ground up. So pretty excited. You have to come. Are, where are you located? I'm in the People's Republic of New Jersey. Hmm. Do you have to come down one time? Come spend a day with us, do a project or something. Did you love it. Research. We'll talk about the project together. I'd love it. I'd love it. We'll figure something out. We'll be in contact. Indeed. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get back to your kids real quick. Parting words of wisdom, if you have it. How can we best contact you, even though you just gave that information? And uh, we'll say goodnight. Just, yeah. Again, you can go. My health, my website's Better Health by Design. That's my office. Um, You can do, we're also um, uh, healthandwellnessscore.com. And I guess just reach out through you. But yeah, basically... My, my advice to anyone is just like, do your best for people. That's it. I, I heard this the other day. It's the best thing I heard. It's like, we're patient advocates through research. We want to know what's best for people by researching what is best. Like, how can we get better results? And that's what we're all about. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you guys very much. If you guys have stuck with us, thank you so much for watching another episode of the Chiropractic Research Breakdown. We're going to keep bringing this kind of value and certainty to you guys for, a, for the future. Keep slaying those subluxations, and I love you all. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Thank you so much for being on.